Welcome to Today in News Tech, the extended chat where we discuss this week's news in media tech and discuss how we can learn how to apply these things to uh, local news publishers. This episode and all episodes are brought to you by Our Hometown Incorporated, where we build WordPress websites customized for newspapers, and we are absolutely committed to developing recurring revenue streams, both on digital subscriptions and through programmatic ad networks. Today's podcast, we're going to be talking about a lot of news this week on revenue. Joining us from the Our Hometown Publisher Support Team, Terry and Tyler. Welcome, both of you. Morning, Matt. Morning. Hey, how's it going? Very well, Tyler. So why don't you actually take us away here? You've got our top story on alternatives to donate buttons. This sounds interesting. What's this about? This article I found on The Fix and... It is essentially discussing other revenue options that aren't subscriptions, but also aren't just a one-time donation that a lot of us have been trained to ignore on the page just because we've been online long enough that we know to just glaze over that kind of thing. So They're getting creative here. So we'll listen to the story and then discuss the takeaways. Are there alternatives to donate buttons? This episode of Today in News Tech is made possible with audio articles by OurHometown.com. Today, we're highlighting a piece by Dushyant Kare over at The Fix about their attempts at introducing a new fundraising model. The article, not just social media platforms, Publishers Deserve Better Tipping Solutions, discusses the recent influx of light news readers and the ways publications have been attempting to monetize them. Spawning Fay from The Fix's partnership with Fusents, the article talks about how useful integrated tipping systems have become for websites. Tipping provides a way for readers to show they value a piece of work, and publishers to gather data, all while leaving the subscription model intact, said Kare. Here are a few of our big takeaways. Adding an integrated tipping interface reduces bounce rates that can result from funneling readers to a third party in order to complete a transaction. Light readers are casual and frequent, and picky. They are far less likely to subscribe, but far more article to pay or donate on a per-article basis. On-site tipping is a great solution for public service journalism and other instances where publications need support but paywalls are antithetical to their mission. It's becoming increasingly clear that papers will need to shift to more flexible, dynamic monetization models in order to keep up with readers' habits. Because of this, our hometown built its WordPress platform to accommodate a variety of paywall and monetization strategies. Pull up the article there. Let's highlight these, these takeaways through the lens of the local news publisher. I'm writing an email right now to Ops, just imagining how this could be done on our sites. Really, all that it needs is a button that draws attention to the fact that we take tips and sends them to a a page that could be a gravity form to process the payment. I guess just putting in the credit card every time is a little bit of a hurdle there, but... We can definitely do this, technically. Yes. I mean, the the article goes into a little more in-depth. This is kind of a Mm -hmm. promotional post. This right. is The Fix talking about a company that they're currently working with that is also developing a platform for doing this. It sounds like all it is, is just integrating donations directly on the page rather than redirecting the reader somewhere else. Because like they point out, like I know personally when I've clicked to buy or even donate on a website before and it takes me to a separate web page, I either forget about it or I just don't right. want to deal with it at that point. Yeah. And what would be another example of a third-party tipping site? There's like GoFund me right maybe people i mean they even point out kickstarter has this issue interesting so kickstarter is a platform where you can go and and donate to like startups but you're saying that there are just too many steps there's too many steps right the startup has their own website that they're marketing or their own social media presence and then they have to send them over to kickstarter to a third party and right. yeah, that increases the bounce rate. Definitely makes sense. We want to lower that. I want to talk about a specific example of that later. I'll show you guys with the Washington Post about lowering hurdles, minimize bounce rates. So technically, I think we would just need a button that could be inserted to, on every article or it could be on the right column. This might be something worth highlighting in the newsletter. This type of thing, it's just I see your article and it's just like, yeah, why didn't I think of that? But some people are doing the donate option and they will link to a donate page with all these preset options. This would be the user can select. Ideally, they could put in the amount into a field. That's like a true tip. I would just love to see a way we could test this through a mobile device to see if you could just tip 
through uh, the card oh, yeah. that's in your phone. I think you could. Well, yeah, through Apple Pay. That would be yeah, right. incredibly simple. I mean, even just testing if that's possible on the Acorn site, TO Acorn, they have a donation option. I'll just test that myself on the phone and see if it allows me to in- input my credit card. And then we can promote that as something publishers should really offer, first of all, but then promote the fact that it's really easy to do on mobile or something like that. Pointing out to them that the mobile payment is, is integrated. That would be really helpful. How about the second point? Just going into a little more depth on what light readers are and kind of why tipping is a better alternative for them, especially right now. Like it points right. out that last year amidst the height of the pandemic was a big time for subscribers. And right. in 2021, that has kind of shifted to the inverse where huh. there are a lot of people that very specifically want the information they want and they aren't really that invested in the full package. Yeah, and these flyby people, so important for it to be easy. The more I think about this, this is a really important thing to emphasize. I mean, mainly that we would just need to, first of all, point out the fact that it's really easy to accept credit cards through mobile. It's in fact easier than desktop in many cases. Making it clear to publishers that you really got to think about how the mobile reader sees the site. Like if you want to focus on donations, that button needs to be front and center. The subscribe button should be too. The third big takeaway on this story about tipping. Yes. Uh, so they point out that like the best use case for tipping other than getting one-off money is for any kind of public service journalism where right. you are doing the work to inform people. And so locking it behind a paywall doesn't make sense because that's not the goal. You still need support and money. So that was a good lesson. I mean, I think that's just a good part of the audience to address because there's plenty of publishers out there that we work with in that situation. See, I'm like so into this design of the first landing page of the mobile site. First impressions are everything and you only have a few seconds with people especially when they're coming in from a whole new newsletter that we're going to be targeting. I would almost say that at least a donate button needs to float throughout the page just in the corner at all times. I haven't seen that done and I'm not sure if we have any plugins that do it, but that's a great Great, idea. It's just logical. Like at any time that they're going to have the desire to donate, we should be right there. I think that pretty much covers it for this article. Now, I sent you an email, Tyler. Could you bring that up? Seven tips on asking for money. This is from Lion Publishers, who we work with. They're a great group, the Local Independent Online News Publishers Association. It's a brand new association. They're very well organized and they produce a ton of great content. We're sponsors and we, Henrico Citizen is a member. There's a bunch of online only publications we work with. I get their newsletters occasionally. And today it came out with this one, seven smart ways to ask your readers for money. So this is kind of like what our hometown does. They're just sending out you know, helpful tips as much as they can. Tell readers about your impact this year. A bunch of these kind of remind me of what they did at the recorder here online, just the message that they had above the button. What would your life be like without the recorder? Let's look at this specific example, though. There's some papers producing an entire annual report about your impact. You could do this in many different ways. They talk about later just putting out editorials talking about what you do. I think that's the main point here is just educating your readers on all that you're doing for the community. Share your plans and goals for 2022. I love this idea. This is something I like to do at our hometown, you know, we do the year in review. Uh, we'll be doing that soon. We need to be doing it in the next couple of weeks where we look at all the blog posts in the last year, or, or at least the highlights. You know, that's a great way to reinforce wh- where we've come from. But then like having an executive plan for the next year, what are we working towards? That's huge. That's showing that you're not static. I think the newspaper business has a really bad reputation as just being stuck in the past. But So many newspapers are very forward-thinking and multimedia organizations. They're not just papers anymore. Anything you guys want to add to that? Or have you seen any publishers doing anything like this? That's a good question. Terry, in production, are they writing editorials about what they do or what they plan to do at all? No, that's a really good point. A lot of times we'll see end-of-the-year messages, you know, thank you for your support. We hope we can count on your continued support. But I right. haven't seen anything ever about the details of yeah, what they're doing. Detailing the future goals. That's a great That's idea. Really interesting. It really is. It's important to thank your, your readers, but 
Right. Give them a taste of what's coming up, you know, kind of entice them to stick around. And Another part of that, I think to extend this point, and I don't know if it's a, a later one, but like Kevin Slimp is always talking about, you know, surveys from readers. So not just sharing plans and goals, but showing how you are getting information from the audience to develop those goals. You know, using the donate tip button, especially right. the bloater. I was thinking about that when Tyler was talking. If you could have the button say something like, want to see more of this right each article and then use that to formulate your plan for the the upcoming year present that to your readers you know as you oh as absolutely you're, i you love that those two things together because well, then you have, know exactly what your readers are looking for that's a really good point just a simple like dislike button would expand our understanding of the reader's interest so much because we can look at what they've mm-hmm. viewed you know, what are the most popular articles, but we don't know what they thought of the story. We don't know how much of it they read. There's so much more we could be teasing out there. I've seen some publications do it where you go to the page and they give you a little teaser, even if it is a free site or you're logged in, they still just give you a little teaser and it says read more. So if you click that, that's another signal to them that you actually are reading the story rather than just looking at a picture and bouncing. Those would look the same in the stats. I, I was just going to say a donate button would also really help with those stats because yes. like knowing which articles specifically people are compelled yes. to donate on. Oh my right. gosh. That's like another million dollar question. Like what are the articles that put people over the edge and make them finally decide because that button's everywhere. If right. we go with, down this route, the button's constantly right. there. Wow. Very exciting stuff. Okay, let's get back to this. Number three, pulling back the curtains on what it costs to produce your work. This was an interesting one. I don't know how many publishers would feel comfortable with that. I, I don't know how much detail they'd have to give. Going into 2022, personally, I don't know if newsprint has come down in price or not. That was a major topic in 2020 and 2021. Me, I would be like, okay, yeah, I see your costs have gone up, you know, 700% over two years ago for a newsprint interested in supporting a paper, if they told me that. You could go in as much detail as you want. You could just write an editorial on the rising costs of print and just draw attention to it that way. Or you could put together some type of report that details how much we're spending on digital, you know, how much we're making on advertising. I mean, you could go real granular. Or, or how much, yeah, or how much you've lost in advertising revenue because of just show the change rather than the absolute figures like percent loss. Yeah. 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 It's just the truth. You're reporting on yourself as if you were an outsider. You could still spin it as you're not dissing the advertisers for lowering their budgets or having to deal with their budgets. You support advertisers but you're the one that's taken a hit. Let's get through the rest of this list because, I mean, we've still got a bunch of other points I want to hit. Leverage your partners, advertisers, or major donors to offer perks for year-end giving. We had a great request come through this week. It was a really exciting idea. They offered advertisers their version of 12 Days of Christmas. What the advertiser did was they would buy a spot and it would be 12 days of movies. At the end, you know, the advertisers would offer a small prize and then there would be a drawing at the end or whatever. But I thought that was a great idea to grab your sponsors, grab your advertisers and give them an option to kind of shine. That's just a creative way of bringing up the advertisers, not in just a display ad. You know, you're creating content for people to enjoy. I mean, in this case, it would be a minimum donation to receive perks. So, you know, it's just, I guess, a matter of partnering with the business and saying, look, let's just agree to give away this much. That's just going to be your cost to get this exposure. When a publisher approaches an advertiser to come up with a discount deal, they understand they need to give away something to get the attention. It just depends on what kind of advertiser it is, what they could give away. It could be anything, two for one coupon or something at the restaurant. Get people Um, in the door. Just to get them spending something on that first visit. Set a campaign goal and update your readers along the way. Okay. This is the one I mainly wanted to comment on. This seems like such a great idea. Some type of a GoFundMe type interface, counting how far along you are towards the goal. We could accept all the donations through member press or Stripe, but it would be just a matter of tracking it in a campaign and then totaling it and putting it on that front page. You know, because obviously those things, they're 
on all these things for a reason. When you see that it's low, it kind of works both ways. When you see that they're close, you might be more inclined to help them. But I think most Kickstarter campaigns don't get fully funded until like the final eight hours. And I know uh, I like to see a meter just get filled up. I, I think that's exciting yeah, to watch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I love this idea because this is all just kind of happening behind the scenes. If you know that other people are donating, I think that may also right. make more people inclined to do it because they, they see that this is like gaining momentum. There's a lot of psychology behind this, but as I think about all the meters I've seen in, in my reactions, it's it's always positive to see the status. We're already taking these donations. This would be a way to just make it more transparent. Okay, we talked about number six already, uh, writing an editorial about why your journalism is essential. Yeah, let's do your, your other article here. This is about subscribers. Let's hear it first and then discuss. How to identify and keep at risk subscribers. This episode of Today in News Tech is made possible with audio articles by our hometown.com. Today, we're highlighting a piece by Mark Jacob over at the Northwestern Local News Institute about the measures papers are taking to help retain subscribers that are less engaged. The article Medill's new index puts spotlight on rescuing at-risk subscribers, discusses strategies to identify and keep at-risk subscribers. At-risk subscribers are customers that are currently paying for your service but visiting the site two or fewer times a month, meaning they're likely to unsubscribe. 20% of digital-only subscribers did not visit the website they were paying for even once a month, fitting the definition of what industry slang calls zombie subscribers. The best way to retain at-risk subscribers is to keep in contact with them with things like emails, social media, and text messages. Remind them to keep coming back to the site so they feel like their subscription is valuable. Deep discounts can help inflate first-time subscription numbers to the point where the churn of at-risk subscribers becomes less impactful on subscription revenue. Identifying at-risk subscribers goes beyond just looking at site visits. See where people are reading on every platform including newsletters, apps, and social media engagement. Gaining new subscribers is very important, but hmm. keeping them around is just as vital. Because of this, our hometown developed our WordPress platform to have the capability to track your site analytics and monitor reader engagement. This is a recurring theme, a bunch of things that we just talked about in a recent story. The stat that I want to focus on and maybe develop a product around is the two or fewer visits per month. That's what they call a zombie subscriber. That's a good number, man. It just makes perfect sense. So what we could maybe do, I mean, we're tracking all the stats for the subscribers. You know, once they log in, then we can tie their email to their IP and things like that. And so we know when they're coming in and yeah, we could just have some kind of flag on the user. The question is, what do they do next to rescue them? But this would be the kind of beginning of it. And we would provide those uh, suggestions on how they could bring them back in. But this, the article goes into them. Did you want to go through some of these stats, Tyler? I, I thought the more detailed numbers were really interesting. I yeah. just didn't want to get too stats yeah. heavy in the post, but I really like this paragraph here that kind of right. divides papers into different tiers and then gives right. you metrics on who would be at risk based on the tier of paper. Okay. So that's the number that they would consider at risk. Wow. Zero right in on tier three, right? That's the small outlets or maybe tier two for some of our publishers. It's a so, 96% monthly retention rate. So they're saying at the beginning of the month, compared to the end, you still have 96% of them. That's the highest of all the tiers, it looks like. I think the key number there is they're only visiting every 10 and a half days. It's saying they come back 10 different days of the month. Yes. Wow. So I would say anyone dipping below that would be in the at-risk category. Okay. For our customers, it's 10 or fewer. Wow. Interesting. That sounds about right because an average paper is a weekly in print. We put out their paper, send out the newsletter. People come in for that once a week, and then they're coming in from social media, You know, maybe another one or two times a week to hit that minimum. If they're really engaged, then they're actively just pulling up the site unprompted. But this is like the minimum. Right. Like they have some kind of call to action. It's an email newsletter or a post on Facebook. That's kind of cool. We do have our bases covered with that, I think. All right. Any other comments on this? I like the next paragraph down there that says your local news is a one-stop shop. So there is value in being a small community newspaper. It's a one-stop shop and it's got oh. unique content. That's the only place you can go for local news, local events and sports in many communities. And, but then they're saying many of them are providing kind of that international or national news. I don't think a lot of our publishers do. I would say that's not as important in my opinion, but I mean, I could be wrong. 
do you want to be rewriting national stories and publishing it? Or are we talking about linking off site and just being an aggregator? Because that could be valuable and, and not take a lot of time. I, I don't know. National news that attracts attention in local newspapers is right. the national news that you don't find anywhere else. It's the hidden news, the feel good stuff. That's kind of unique content. <laughs> right, true. It sounds like people are not talking about it as much because it doesn't, if it bleeds, it leads. You know, if it's inflammatory, it's going to get a lot of traction on social media. But you're talking about just, yeah, the positive national news that maybe has some kind of connection to the community. I mean, I just feel like it's all got to have that lens and advantage that newspapers have right out of the gate. And we got to you know, just take advantage of it. Identifying the less loyal. Was this one of the other main points? You want to go through some any stats in here? Here's that 27% visited two days or fewer. 36 were seven days or fewer. 48, 15 days or fewer or so. I think just breaking it down into those tiers could also be really useful. On the story that we read about zombie subscriptions, it was like a bell-shaped curve and some standard deviation on the low end is considered a zombie. And they're saying that that ends up being about 27% of the average newspaper. All else equal, I'd rather have somebody who visits every day and reads one article than someone who visits once a week and reads seven. Those two people provide the same number of page views but the one who has a habit of daily mm. usage mm. is going to be a better retained customer, generally speaking. That's a really good perspective on this. And so what can we do to encourage that? Send out more newsletters and post on social media every day, right? Right. right. And that's Clearly. more or less what they get to down here. Just remind them that your content's there at every step. Don't let them forget that they're subscribing and make them interact right. with it so that they don't feel like they're losing money. Yes, I love that point. I'm always making that argument for the newsletter. Remind your kind customers of, of the value. Right. And that's through editorial, directly doing it, you know, with the words that you're using and the way that you frame that donate button, but it's also just the frequency that you're communicating. And we saw this in some old episodes on Today in News Tech. Daily podcasts are significantly more successful than weekly or monthly. And it's just something about that frequency that gets you access to a significantly bigger audience. Another article from, I think it was Local News Initiative also, just saying how weekly newspapers can be weekly in print, but they need to be daily and digital. You know, for us, we view it as like the news is new. We want to get it out on the website as soon as possible, but you can still market it over time and spread it out over the course of the week on social media so that you Specifically get... Specifically when you know you're targeting people that haven't interacted with it yet. And, and that's mainly going to be the social media audience. The newsletter is going to go out immediately when we publish the new edition. So the people that are subscribers and that are really engaged will probably see it right away. It's widening the funnel, just increasing engagement as much as possible. Any other points on this one we want to make? I mean, I think my only like final point, which ties into the reaching out to people regularly is that's only half of the equation because when you're sending out things like social media posts, newsletters, that kind of thing, you also right. need to be keeping track of whether or not people are actually opening them. Yeah. And then tweaking how you design the newsletter, the frequency, maybe you break up the audience a little bit. I mean, this is something right. that we could be doing with our newsletter. I realized years ago that the communication with our customers wasn't what it needed to be. And so now we have a weekly newsletter and I feel so good about that. I really think it's gone a long way in retention purely for the education. It's showing our customers what we do, highlighting things that they maybe never knew about. Retaining a customer's always cheaper than getting a new one. Okay. I think that's good on this one. Thank you so much, Tyler. Let's pivot over yeah. to Viraj. Okay. So today's fact is basically setting up test subscribers. We had an email and this is just a refresher course, you know, crash course. So basically I am on the demo site and these are our subscribers for the newsletter. And if you want to set up test subscribers to test out what your newsletter is going to look before it even gets sent out or if you're still building it, all you would need to do is go into the back end to newsletter and then look for subscribers. And then this will show here. So I created this one here. That's me. <laughs> and you just go right to edit. You'll scroll all the way down and you'll see this box here. It's just a matter of turning it on. And it's that Perfect. easy. So the test newsletter, you can use that for the manual newsletter. 
or the automated, right? That's the right. Automated template. I think that's the one it's most useful for because you don't actually know what that's going to look like until you run the test. You're setting it up as a template, but each week it's pulling in new stories. So we use this every week before we send out our customer newsletter. It's a great tool. We've just got our production team on the test. They get it the night before and you know they can send feedback. So if you have a team working on it, or maybe if you're redesigning the newsletter based on the feedback, like Tyler was saying, you look at what the open rate is, how can we improve it, and you're tweaking the design, you're going to want to be testing that to make sure it looks good on your phone and desktop and everything. Just generally a really useful function I, I use all the time. Any other points? If you have a customer who is on the bounce list, and that means that they're no longer receiving the newsletter, you can actually go right here and see how many newsletters that mm -hmm. they clicked and opened and how many they've missed. So you can right. kind of pinpoint when this started. All it is, is just they added your website to their contact list and whitelist it, and they should get right. it again. We can resend the confirmation um, so that way they can sign up. Are publishers often saying that they have subscribers that are trying to get the newsletter, but they are not and they don't know why? I actually had one uh, earlier this week too, that somebody was on the newsletter list. They were not bounced. They, they were supposed to be receiving it. Right. And I saw where we delivered it. And there's a report here. Let me bring up the actual page here of the person. What I did, uh, she, she actually was subscribed. And uh, let me see if I could find her again. And it's basically the same thing. You get a newsletter and then subscribers, but you can go right here and see the logs. I mean, there's a lot of information we're storing in here. You can put them on different lists one at a time, like we were saying earlier. Maybe you have a newsletter that people get every day, but another newsletter that only goes out monthly. That's like a summary of the whole month. And maybe people just prefer that frequency. I know we were talking about hitting people up daily, but you also want to have options for people or whatever fits their preference. For this example, you know, you can see which ones they're clicking on. So right. this person's definitely getting the newsletter, but they haven't clicked or read it. And that was right. the same uh, situation where they were getting it delivered. We could see that we've sent it, but they haven't clicked or, or read it. Right. right. Let's go to the, the general tab again on this person, you'll be able to see their status. See, and this is status is confirmed. See the status box? If it says bounce, this is mm -hmm. where they let the publisher know that the subscriber's email client rejected the newsletter. And that's when we need to reach out to the subscriber again and say, check your, if your Gmail, check your promotions, your updates. When it's bounced though, does it show up at anywhere in their email? Like, would it be in the spam? No, you have to reach out to the subscriber personally. It could be in spam, right. yes. But you're saying from a different email, not from the Our Hometown newsletter email. You, well, you, you need would... to reach out to them personally rather than right. using the newsletter because the newsletter yes. is bounced. Yeah, it's bounced and now it's been kind of blacklisted by their email. Right. So they need to white label that. Got it. Right. And what Vera is doing right here is you can search, you can filter your newsletter subscribers by their status. She's going to pull up all the bounce subscribers right here. You know, if you have someone that Very you helpful. to do this, you know, once a week or so, just reach out to these customers and see if they've had a problem receiving the newsletter, which they'll say, yeah, we have. Interesting. It's all about yeah. retention because if this, right. if they're subscribers and they're not getting the notification that a new issue has published, they're not yep. going to look for it right. and they're exactly. going to cancel. Totally. Yeah. This is exactly right. what we're talking about today. This is yeah. perfect. So then if you go in, you can actually, Vera mentioned, resending the invite. Yes. So that would be that button. Okay. But that would be something you would need to wait until you get confirmation uh, from them. You get confirmation. Yeah. Right. So you've reached out through a separate email, not the right. newsletter, told them, we noticed this is an issue. Would you like to be added? Then they have to actually take that step in their Gmail to white label the email. Right. And then we send it. Well, then we set them to confirm. Oh, we can just set it to confirm. We don't need to resend activation. Well, we set it to confirmed, but then you send the reactivation. And you do both. That's their two step verification. Yeah. All right. Very, very nice. That's a perfect FAQ for today. Thanks for watching Today in News Tech, the podcast covering innovation in digital journalism. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube or any of your favorite podcast apps. We'll see you tomorrow.
At our hometown we help newspapers build WordPress websites, design native apps, and develop digital subscription models. If you are interested in a free prototype of your publication on WordPress, go to our hometown.com and click the Contact Us button.